So a recent study came out and showcased that over 54% of American adults never check their credit score, ever. So let's talk about that. Hello everybody, this is Zach Ritchie, credit expert here for over 10 years at Fund & Grow, and we wanted to take a moment here to really deep dive into that study. 54% of adults never check their credit score. That is a huge blind spot, especially if you are trying to make any sort of advancements in terms of obtaining credit, building a profile, getting new loans, getting better interest rates on loans. If you're trying to get funding that isn't just cash in hand, knowing what your credit score looks like is hugely important. And so, I'm gonna take a little time to discuss what exactly is a credit score and is there anything that you can do to influence it one way or the other? How do you gain control of what your credit report looks like instead of it just floating in the breeze and for any lender to look at and judge you harshly on? So, a credit score is the three digit summary of what's going on with your credit report. On the low end, it's about 550 or less. On the high end, you're looking at 850 as basically your top point. In order to really figure out what's going on with your credit score at any time, you have to remember there are basically five key elements that influence a credit score. And we're gonna go over those elements right now. The biggest one, the biggest influence on anyone's credit situation at 35% influence is payment history. The primary concern of every lender is whether your previous credit accounts have been paid on time, which helps them determine how likely you are to pay future credit accounts on time. One or two late payments is not going to destroy decades worth of positive payment history, but it's certainly going to decrease that credit score. An overall positive payment history usually can outweigh a couple of dings here or there, but at its core, this is what's proving to these lenders that you can be responsible. So, the number one thing you want to keep in mind when it comes to payment history is whatever your monthly due date is, you want to make sure that you're not only paying it then, you may even want to pay it a few days earlier because then you're going to have plenty of time for that to reflect on time and for everything to look like it's supposed to. Not give the banks any kind of excuse if they're running a little behind or whatever the case is. You want to maintain those monthly due dates and if, if possible, maybe even overpay those monthly due dates in order to look your best in regards to this huge influence on your credit score. Now the second biggest influence is amount owed. So carrying a balance on your credit card accounts is not the same as being a high risk borrower or you know living off the credit or something like that. However, maxing out all of your cards at once is going to indicate to the bank lenders that you are overextended. Even if you're, let's say, running your business through your personal credit and it's like, well, it's an ebb and flow and sometimes I owe more and sometimes it's all paid off, the bank is always going to assume the worst. So this particular category refers to the total debt that you carry, but credit utilization is a significant figure that can impact your credit score. So best idea to maintain a healthy credit utilization ratio is to aim at about under 30% balances on your credit cards. Now, I will let you know that for those people that are on the higher end of the credit spectrum, like 800, 850, that kind of range, they're typically keeping their balances to about 10% or less. Not saying you have to do that, but just use logic here. If under 30% looks good, then spending but then making big payments that keep things lower than that is only going to look better. Now, next factor to keep in mind with your credit score is length of credit history. Oftentimes, lending institutions, banks, they kind of want to see what the other guy's doing. So having a long track record with credit impacts your credit scores positively because it shows lenders that you can use credit responsibly over a long period of time. This particular category considers how long your credit accounts have been open, how much time has passed since you last used your account, etc, etc. They want to be rest assured that if they give you funding that you're in it for the long haul and that you can remain responsible with that credit. So not having a long credit history doesn't mean you're automatically going to be denied for anything that you try to apply for. It just simply means that you should keep this in mind 
as you are applying for things. That once you have an account established, that time is on your side. That the longer you maintain that account well, the better your score is going to look because you're showcasing that longevity and you're showcasing that responsibility. These are important things that these lenders want to see. Next up is credit mix. So the type of credit accounts you hold are known as your credit mix. So lenders like to see that you can use and repay different credit accounts. That doesn't mean, you know, go open one of every type of account out there all at once. It just means that, you know, if you've got credit cards, retail accounts, auto loans, mortgages, etc., having that variety, having that buffet of type of accounts is going to look good. It's not just a matter of all I can handle is just a credit card or all I can handle is just an auto loan that automatically charges me every month. It's showing that you can maintain a lot of different accounts, a lot of different types of rules in terms of repayment or interest rates or whatever. And so these are all factors that lenders are going to look at positively. Now, again, it doesn't mean that you should go apply for a bunch of different types of credit accounts uh, all at once because that can do more harm than good because it's going to lower your age of accounts and then create an excessive number of inquiries on your report, which in turn is going to drag that score down. Uh, and actually, speaking of inquiries, our final section here is new credit. Every time you apply for something new on your credit, it's going to result in an inquiry. Now, these inquiries stay on your credit report for about two years and they'll just fall off on their own. However, the initial impact of the inquiry basically falls off after about 12 months. Now, if you open too many new accounts within a short period, it represents a greater risk to other lenders, uh, especially if you don't have a huge established history, then applying for everything under the sun makes you look desperate for money and lenders can sense that. So what you want to do is you want to pace yourself as much as you can. So if you apply for something now, if you apply for a credit card now, you get that card Wonderful. Realistically speaking, you should be waiting about four to six months before applying for the next thing and we'll let the impact of that first inquiry fade so that you'll have a best chance to obtain something new. In fact, you might see this happen already. If your credit score suddenly goes up and you think, well, I've just been making the same payments. Uh, I don't know what's going on. It's probably something along the lines of your inquiry from however long ago, the impact's been lessened. And so now your scores go up. So long and short, like every credit report, each credit score is unique to the individual. And what we've talked about here are not necessarily things that you can just change overnight, but it's things that you should be thinking about for the future. Things like, how is this going to affect my payment history? Am I obtaining too many inquiries? You know, what's my utilization look like? These are things that you should be considering as you are continuing to build forward. These are all going to be factors that the lenders are going to look at. And so if you want to achieve your goals financially, this is the complete building block to start with, is what does your credit score look like? Now, obviously, a score is not an all be all. It's just a summary of the overall credit situation, but it's a strong starting point to achieve the kind of things that you want. Now, we've talked about what makes up a credit score. Now, the question is, how do you look up what, a, what credit score you have? Well, that's hugely important too. There's plenty of services out there who, that will pull a credit report for you, uh, but you want to make sure that what you're looking for is actually going to be met by these companies. So the one that I always recommend is, of course, Fund and Grow Credit Monitoring Service. It is a great service that allows you to really get a good look at what's going on with your credit so you can make the best decisions on where you want to go with your credit and what the next steps may be for you. So feel free to sign up there get this information in your pocket and then you are going to be able to achieve what you're looking to achieve with your credit and be informed and not be left in the dark like over 54 percent of american adults so i hope this has been informative if you have any other questions or any other subjects you want us to dive deep into leave it in the comments below we'll answer as soon as we can and for everybody here i'm zach ritchie and we'll see you next time